<sighs> Sock off it. What's up to all my Zoles out there, man? All my people, man. No matter where y'all at, man. If y'all tuning in, I really appreciate y'all for joining, you know what I'm saying? Uh, subscribing, you know, hit that notification bell. I want y'all to send comments and I want y'all to like and share all the content that y'all see on my platform. You know, uh, y'all count, you know what I'm saying? What y'all say count, what y'all say matter. When I first got out, I started trying to learn uh, social media. I really didn't know technology because I was locked up a long time. If y'all follow you know, uh, my platform, y'all follow me since I've been out. I've been taking y'all on a journey, but it was kind of rough because I was everywhere. And uh, some people probably got lost in the, in the content or whatever. Some stuff y'all like, you know, uh, some stuff you probably got lost. But it was all, you know what I'm saying, true content. And what I'm going to do now is uh, my brother, he told me about the content when I was dropping the last uh, video for NBA Youngboy, he seen the post that I put and he was like, bro, I seen your your, your video and what you were saying. You were saying some good stuff, man, but uh, you were saying a lot of MFs, you know, and if you want somebody to, if you want sponsors and stuff to pay you for your content, you got to learn how to clean up your vocabulary, you know, and uh, deliver and articulate your words to where a, a person will want to you know, get behind you and bag what you pushing. So what I'm finna do, you know, uh, from here on out, I'm finna start setting me a platform because I want y'all to follow what I'm saying. And uh, what I'm finna start doing by me being in prison so long and, and in so many different prisons from the East Coast down South to the West Coast, you know, uh, every prison system was different. Every prison system gave me something different. You know, sometime was easier than others. You know what I'm saying? And just because a person was locked down doing a life without parole or probation, you know what I'm saying, sentence, that didn't mean that I didn't have good times in prison. You know, sometimes, you know, uh, a person got to find out how to weather the storm, you know what I'm saying, to have, have fun, you know, and make his time fun and uh, impactful. But I want to take y'all back to Arkansas, you know, it was a unit called Varna, you know, in Grady, Arkansas. And if you look in the, where Varna had in Grady, Arkansas, you look in the back, you also got this other prison back there, you know what I'm saying, which is Cummins, right? But I'm telling y'all, starting off with, with Varna unit. Varna unit was gladiator school when I first came through, you know? And uh, they used to always have rides, man. Cats used to always get stabbed up and everything. But to me, that's just dealing with incarceration, period. You know what I'm saying? That's just dealing with incarceration. When you put a person in a pressure cooker, you know, uh, they bound to blow. You know, they're going to bump heads. They, You know, you can't, you got to release pressure somewhere. You know, so, uh, man, they had some cold little, uh, they had some cold little get downs at, at uh, Varna, right? At Varna, you can buy you some commissary. You go to commissary, man, they got a whole squad. Everybody to come in, unless you up in age, you know, and you can't go out, you got a mandatory for 60 days on whole squad. They take you out there to the field, give you a hoe, and you chopping all day. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you come back with blisters, you know what I'm saying? Your feet got blisters on them. It's crazy. And then you come in, and they take you, you got to sit and wait on the shower to open up. And they call you shower. So you laying back and you stinking, you know what I'm saying? You're dusting from head to toe. So you don't want to get in your rack, you know? And then anybody that did time down in Arkansas, y'all know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? This was in uh 97, what I'm talking about, right? So uh we come in. And uh at this time, when we come in, we come through Salaport. We stop at Salaport. We go, you know what I'm saying, make a left turn. We go to the laundry room. The laundry room is where you get your rolls, you know what I'm saying, your bed rolls, you know, your blanket, your sheets, your your uh, underwear, stuff like that. From there, you go to the infirmary to get your vital signs and stuff checked. In the hallway on our way to the infirmary, it's so many cats in the hallway, you know, cats mugging you. You, you fresh meat, you, you know what I'm saying? Everybody that come through that door, they short hairs. You fresh fish on the line, you know what I'm saying? You got a couple cats that been been through the, the prison system before and they know how it worked. But like, if you've never been there, man, they looking for your weakness. 
Everybody, they, they mugging you. It's a lot of cats in the hallway. You hear some cats, man, that'll brush up on you, you know what I'm saying, just to get a re reaction out of you to see how you respond to that, you know? So, uh, we make it to the, uh, to the infirmary. They checking our vitals, you know what I'm saying? And at Vaughn, well, prison down South, period, the inmates basically run the prison, you know what I'm saying? If you want to get changed from one barracks to the next, all you got to do, you pay a, pay an inmate, you know, that work in classification or something, you get your stuff tra transferred, right? So, uh, we go get our vital signs checked. The next step was uh, to leave from the North Hall. You know what I'm saying? We didn't just come in from Sallyport here to walk through this whole hallway, the main hallway, into the North Hall and go into the infirmary. Now we got to come out of the infirmary and go through the North Hall, back through the main hall, and shoot down to the South Hall. Right, the uh the library was in the south hall, so we fall up in the library. The library is where the, the white dude worked that passed out, you know, what I'm saying uh, uh rack assignments and, and barracks assignments. When I stepped up in there, that's when I knew I was really in prison, man. I I'm talking about I'm looking around, and uh it's like eight homosexuals in here, and I'm not talking about about no homosexual feminine men. These are full fledged women homosexuals. You know what I'm saying? Got their hair whipped up, got their they eyebrows and stuff done, you know, rosy cheeks and lips and everything. Flamboyant all the way out. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, man, I really made it to the big leagues right now. You know what I'm saying? This is crazy. I'm I'm, I'm really in prison. You know what I'm saying? These, this is it, you know? And this really starting to set in right now, you know? So, I'm like, man, I'm ready to get up out of here. You know what I'm saying? I hope don't now one of these dudes say nothing to me. You know what I'm saying? They over and they sniggling and they they giggling and, and cutting their eyes at cats, but they didn't say nothing. You know what I'm saying? They didn't say nothing. Me, I'm a, I'm a little dude. You know what I'm talking about? I was, what, 17 turning 18 at the time? You know? So, um, you get assigned to uh, our birds. I was in one birds, right? That's why I met my dude, Barbarian. Barbarian, he was uh, he was from West Memphis, Arkansas. Barbarian, he he gave me my first uh knife in prison. We was in the day room and uh just chopping it up, you know what I'm saying? Just I'm telling him about my brother and them. They know my brother. They grow up with my brother and them, you know what I'm saying? I didn't really know these dudes though, you know? And um, my brother and them, they know everybody from, from Memphis. Arkansas, uh, West Memphis, Arkansas, Memphis, you know what I'm saying, all in that area. My brother and them, they did music and everything, you know what I'm saying, so they know everybody. Me, I don't know them cats like that. So I'm shooting who who my brother and them is and stuff. They know them, you know. So anyway, uh, Barbarian, he point over to uh, two barracks. Now, in the day room, you got this security booth where the officers be in the security booth, but they be outside in the hallway most of the time watching the traffic. You can look right across in this windows. You can look right across into the next barracks, right? And so you got these homosexuals, right? They are prancing around in the day room, you know, trying to get the newcomer's attention. Barbarian was like, man, you see that over there? He was like, man, that's why you got to stay laced up, man. You know what I'm saying? You got these people, man, they, they'll try you. You know what I'm talking about? And I was like, yeah, you know, I feel where you're coming from. Now, prison head is the own lingo, right? You hit uh, you hit the bang mans. You know what I'm saying? The bang mans, they was basically homosexuals, you know, but they homosexuals that'll go both ways. They wanna they wanna be dominant and they wanna be submissive. You know what I'm talking about? And they look like a man. You hear the fucker boogers which is the, the flamboyant ones, you know what I'm saying, that look just like women, you know what I'm saying, with the rosy cheeks and all that, putting the makeup on, right? Uh, You had the wolves, which was the dudes that that turn turn cats out, you know what I'm saying, and just, that's all they want to do. Fresh, fresh fists on the line, boom, turn them out, put them out there. But anyway, prison had its own lingo, basically, you know what I'm saying? Everybody had their they own, you know what I'm saying, lanes. You got... Uh, uh, crash dummies, which is dudes that come up in there and uh, they not homosexuals, but they, you know, uh, 
they really can't fight. You know what I'm saying? They can't fend for themselves and they don't have money. And so a lot of dudes pick on them and they call them crash dummies because they beat up on them and throw them off the top tier and stuff. You know what I'm saying? That's all they, that, that's their benefit. You know what I'm saying? Just for a person to take their frustrations out on, you know, it sound cruel, you know what I'm saying? But that was prison life, you know what I'm saying? But um, anyway, I'm navigating through through my whole situation, right? Uh, I'm a jump. I met my dude, M-Town. M-Town, I met him at, at, at Grimes Unit when I got transferred. At Grimes Unit, uh, M-Town was a gambler. M-Town was a hustler. He was this pretty boy. You know what I'm saying? That females used to flock to him, man, just by his looks alone. You know what I'm saying? M-Town was a cool dude. So uh, me and M-Town, we got tight. M-Town was like my brother, man. You see M-Town, you see me. You see me, you see M-Town. You know what I'm talking about? But M-Town didn't have the aggression that I had. I was one of them dudes, man, that if it pop off, I'm, I'm, front on, I'm on the front line. You know what I'm saying? I got my knife. You know what I'm saying? I'm ready to go. I got nice hands. I saucer cat up, you know what I'm saying, with my hands. But my M.O. was stab. I'm trying to stab a person off top. You know what I'm saying? That was my M.O., period. Anybody that know me, that did time with me, they know that I try to stab a dude straight off. But you got some cats that'll try you and be like, man, oh, he just going to pull a knife out on me. You know what I'm saying? And I used to be like, hey, say, check this out. Okay, bet. Let me sauce you up. I sauce him up. And then I bang the knife out on him. You know what I'm saying? Cats be like, man, why you, why you stab him, man? Because that was my M.O. In, anyway, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to stab him anyway. I just had to show him that I had hands, you know? So, anyway, me and them town, we used to hit the hallways, man, blazing trails, you know? The new officers that used to come on, we was at, uh, uh, we met back up at Brickett's, you know what I'm saying? And that's where we really, you know, used to blaze trails up and down the hallways and stuff. New officers come on, female officers, we at them. You know what I'm saying? And me, I hear a little cloud because they used to be like, yeah, this is my son. I raised him in, in prison and, and all this. And uh, so it opened the doors up for me. You know what I'm talking about? Made it easier for me to talk to uh new females, that new fine females. I I was basically first first deals came to me. You know what I'm saying? So me and M-Town, we used to blaze the whole hallway, move at will. I'm talking about we working in the laundry, man. We hit any hallway we want to, go in any bergs. We wanted to at any time. We wanted to. If it's females on the door, they busting the doors down for us. You know what I'm saying? M-Town, I got to say, he was more of a hustler than I was in the beginning. You know what I'm talking about? Until he got transferred. But I'm going to get all the way up to that. So my dude, M-Town, he used to... He used to cook the spreads and stuff, you know what I'm saying? He used to cut my hair up. I had the fade back then. He used to cut my hair up with the razors. He was kind of slick with the razors, right? And cutting cutting hair. And so uh, one day we got split it. We they somebody ended up sliding the kite up under our supervisor's door because the day before we had these these officer women in in the booth right in front of the bathroom and they was twerking, you know what I'm saying, and stuff. And cats used to try to use the bathroom, but we got these females up in there twerking to where, uh, hey, man, we hit it off the chain. They up in the, in the booth twerking and doing their thing, right? So uh, they got us uh, kicked out the birds, you know? They moved me to 16 birds. They used to call 16 birds Club 16 because it used to be a whole lot of heavy hitters, man, a whole lot of grinders, a whole lot of hustlers in there. One was my dude, Hot Shot. He was from West Memphis. Then you had the dude we called Tennessee. He was from Tennessee. That's why we call him Tennessee. You know, we had, uh, um, what is his name? Uh, Lil C. He was a Crip cat. I forgot where he was from. You know, it was a lot of big hitters, man, that was in that, in that, in that bird. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, just about everybody in that bird used to, used to hustle hard, you know? So they moved my dude, M Town, to the East Hall, you know? And, uh, he was in 10 birds. I think it was like nine to 10 birds, right? So uh the next day I wake up, I go to the to the I go to the um laundry room and I see M Town come in. M Town was like, man, he pissed because he had this little radio that he had to speak on it. And uh he was like, man, somebody stole my radio. You know, I'm like, man, you don't, you don't know who did it. You don't, you ain't got an idea who did it. He was like, nah, you know, uh, I think it's this dude though. And he described this dude for me. And, uh, I was like, you know what? 
I know this dude from Grimes. You said that dude is in your, nine times out of 10, that dude is the one that got it. Cause I know this dude, he, he run around stealing people's stuff all the time. You know what I'm talking about? I knew him from a whole nother unit. So when he said that dude's name, I was like, oh yeah, he got it. You know what I'm saying? You ready to go get it? He was like, man, we finna go down there, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and see what it is. So while we were walking, the dude met up with us in the hallway. And he was like, man, uh, they saying that you said that I got your, your radio. M-Town was like, man, if you got it, you know what I'm saying? Just give it to me. You know what I'm saying? Trying to be cool. This dude thought he was going to be slick. He take the radio and go into the visitation area and throw it in the trash can. Somebody in visitation, the whole prison knew we was looking for. It, you know what I'm saying? They they knew we was looking for the, the, this this uh, radio. And a lot of cats knew I didn't play no games with when it came to the, the stab game. And a lot of a lot of cats that that want to move something, they don't want that type of smoke. You feel me? They 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 not looking for that type of smoke. They not they in prison. They didn't sit on the streets. They didn't shot and ooze it up the whole neighborhood. But they don't want that type of smoke. That's a whole nother animal when it come down to it. You know what I'm saying? They not trying to catch a charge. They everybody be hollering, about, oh, I'm trying to get back to the streets, which is a good thing. You know what I'm saying? You trying to make it back to the streets. But it's like, man, uh. You try to make it to the streets, you need to stay out of out of the way. You know what I'm talking about? But me, I'm living in prison. You know what I'm saying? I gotta get through prison in order for me to get to the get back to the streets. So I stay banged up, you know what I'm saying, and I stay ready for whatever, whatever, however is is coming, you know what I'm saying? And people knew that. So the dude then threw the the radio into the trash can, and somebody that was in visitation came at us in the hallway, with like, hey, say, check this out. The radio you looking for, bro. It's over there in the, uh, it's in the, the visitation trash can. We go, we got the radio. We know that this dude just came and went to this area. We're like, yeah, he the one that, that, that threw the radio in the trash can. So I shoot back to the laundry room. I used to go around the bins, up under the bins in the corner. I used to have my shanks. I used to have a lot of shanks tucked in. Ice picks. I'm talking about, I had the, the mirrors. I used to take the mirrors, bust down the mirrors, and shade them up like they were real razor. They get razor sharp, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I had the ice picks that I made out of uh, the dust mop handles, you know what I'm saying? You get them long dust mop handles, you can make four ice picks out of the dust mop handles. You break them, break them down when you bend it back and forth, it get real hot. You know, I used to make, man, I made some of the best blades, right? And plus, we had magnets. You pay them white dudes that was on magnets to uh, make you some nice little, little, little material. So I, I I stayed banged up. You know what I'm saying? I, I stayed grip tight. And so when we found out that the dude uh, was the one that did it, I went and got the blade. And M-Town was basically like, hey, say, bro, we ain't, I ain't trying to stab the man. You know what I'm saying? We just going to sauce him up. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to stab him or nothing. I was like, okay, bet. This your call. This your stuff. You know what I'm saying? So it's your call. This, this, this really ain't my fight. You know what I'm saying? So we go into the barracks. I see my dude Smoot. I see him. He's a crip. This dude that we after, he's a crip. You know what I'm saying? But Smoot, he he with us. You know what I'm talking about? So I see Smoot and I'm like, man, say, check this out. I give him the blade. Bam. I'm like, say, bro, anybody make a move, bang him up. You know what I'm saying? We finna go handle this dude. Man, I get on one side of the bed. M-Town get on the other side of the bed. Snatch this dude up. You know what I'm saying? We banging him up. I'm kneeing him. You know what Giving them the blues, right? Bang them up real, sauce them up real good. Did what them town wanted. You know what I'm saying? Boom. This is not my barracks. So now I'm trying to get up out of here before I end up getting locked up in the barracks. And I go to the hole, you know what I'm saying, on the humbug. So I shoot down the, the steps. I go to the door. Now, this dude is coming. He, he's, he's coming back, right? He come down the steps and I'm thinking he's trying to catch the door. So as he coming towards me, I up with the blade, right? He see me up with the blade, you know what I'm saying? He slow down, he turn around, and he go sit on the bench. I'm thinking he trying to catch, I'm like, what, you trying to catch the dough? He like, what, what, I look like a coward or something? I'm like, okay, boom. I put the, put the blade back in my pants. Boom, they open the door. The lady that was on the door, she opened the door, let me out. I shoot back down to the, uh, in front of uh, to the lunch room, I hide my blade, right? Now, M-Town's still down there. 
I'm trying to get rid of this blade because they can't hit you with a 17-1 down there unless you, they catch you with the blade. So I'm trying to get this blade up off me. I ain't trying to catch a new charge like that, you know? So, and it's especially when, if I ain't bang nobody up with it, you know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to catch no hot charge. So, uh, M-Town come in. M-Town got a couple of scratches on him, you know, but he ain't too messed up. He be like, oh, yeah, me and the dude, we went head up again. I be like, oh, yeah? He be like, yeah. He be like, shit, he want to see you. You know what I'm saying? I be like, he want to see me. I be like, uh, but you know, you know, uh, I was going, I'm going to bang him up. You know what I'm saying? He be like, I already know. You know, I, I told him he don't, he don't want that smoke because you wanted to bang him up from the get-go and I stopped him. So the dude come down to the laundry room. And he's like, uh, you coming back down now? I be like, look, I'm going to tell you something, bro. You need to thank this dude because if it wasn't for him, I would have stabbed you up in your sleep. You know what I'm saying? He the one told me no. And that's why we snatched you up out of your sleep and did what we did. You know what I'm saying? So you need to be thanking the dude, you know what I'm saying, for stopping me from stabbing you up in your sleep and, and doing something to you, bro. You know what I'm saying? I was like, uh, Sometimes you just got to roll with the punches, man, and let it go. You see what I'm saying? Understand, you know, what, what happened and, and roll with the punches. Be like, okay, I messed up. You know what I'm saying? Messed with the wrong cats. It's cool before you put yourself in a, in, in a deeper position. So the dude left. He was like, all right, he left. I don't think he really knew me. You know what I'm saying? So he going around and I don't know if the dude was really talking crazy or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But word kept getting back to me that this dude was talking reckless about me. You know what I'm saying? Talking about he gonna do this so, and talking about he gonna do that. So I'm in the kitchen and Pope him come to me. He was like, man, yeah, you need to watch your back, man. Cause bro talking about he gonna do this. He gonna do that to you. I was like, oh yeah, I see the dude in the kitchen. He getting up, he taking this tray to the, to the, to the checkout window. I get up right behind him. Boom. I take my tray to the checkout window. Like I said, I stay getting zoomed up. You know what I'm saying? We going through the shakedown line. And a lot of people be like, man, how you get through the shakedown line with your thing on you? You just got to know where to place it. So anyway, I'm coming through the shakedown line, right? Me and him, we getting patted down. He right across from me. I'm like, say, bro, I'm, why am I still getting wind, man, that, uh, that you saying that you're going to do this to me and that you're going to do that to me like it ain't over or something? You know what I'm saying? The dude looked me in my eyes. He was like, man, is it over? I was like, man, it was over when I left. He was like, man, you say it's over, it's over. I was like, all right. And he was a man of his word. You know what I'm saying? That dude didn't come at me or nothing. You know what I'm saying? So I respect the man on that alone. You know, he 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 knew that he messed up. He knew that he was messing with a dude that really brings smoke that he wasn't ready for, right? So anyway, I end up going to the hole on a, on a technicality from some CO or a sergeant lady that had something against me and she locked me up for no reason at all. So they put me in the max, you know what I'm saying? Cause I didn't have a write up or nothing. They put me in the max unit. Uh, uh, one of them, one of the, the max units was max population basically, you know what I'm saying? But they got me in the cell. I can't really come out, but certain officers come in and they let me out. You know what I'm saying? They'll let me out, give me, let me get day room and everything. You know, I want on post to be out. So my dude Dre, Dre and June, them, they come to my cell hollering at me, you know. They be like, man, say uh, you know that uh old boy that y'all got at, he upstairs. I was like, what he been he been talking reckless? They be like, nah, he ain't been talking reckless, and then I'm just letting you know he upstairs, you know, so you can know who in her. I'm like, oh yeah, okay, you know what I'm saying? But the dude never said nothing to me. He acknowledged me and everything. So, you know, uh, if bro watching this, you know what I'm saying? I respect you, you know what I'm saying? I have no animosity to you, you know? It ain't no disrespect you was a real dude, you know, by acknowledging that you did wrong, you know what I'm saying? And accepted then the consequences that came your way, you know, without trying to further the, the consequence. All right. Right after that now, uh, I'm in the bergs. I get a call to come to the... uh. Come down to the to the to the laundry room. You know what I'm saying? This was like a couple of days after. I get to the laundry room. M Town come in right behind me, man. He, he's a light skinned dude, so his face kind of red, right? He was like, "Man, I need I need one of them things." I was like, "What you talking about, bro?" He was like, "Man, 
you know Big Yoga? I was like, no, nah, I don't know Big Yoga. You know what I'm saying? Well, Big Yoga, he was from somewhere. I, I, Jones Burrell or something. I don't know where, where Big Yoga from. But um, he was like, yeah, Big Yoga, he he said that he wanted to buy some cigarettes. Cigarettes in, in prison at the time was costing $20 a pack of tops, right? He said he slid Big Yoga the pack of tops up under the door, and Big Yoga slid him a bill up under the door, back up under the door, right? And he left because he's in the hallway. He's not trying to get seen grabbing his money or nothing because he'll get locked up. So he grabbed the money thinking that it was good fate. Boom, he shot out. When he get to where he could see the money, Big Yoga then got out on him and uh, slipped this man a dollar, right? So that's when he come to the, the lunch room. He telling me about the situation, right? So I'm like, man, what happened? He telling me what happened. So as soon as he tell me what happened, I'm like, bang, bet. I reach him into my stash. Didn't nobody know where my stash was but me and them town. So I reach into my stash. I grab my blades. You know what I'm saying? I give them town one. I keep one. We shoot down to uh, Big Yogi uh, Sale. I mean, Big Yogi Barracks. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Uh, you got one through four on one side of the hall. You got uh you got five through eight on the other side of the hall, right? My brother, which is uh, one of the twins, you know what I'm saying? My brother, he's in six bergs. It's right across, it's like diagonal from four bergs. He can see the bergs, right? We come down, he see me uh, uh hit the hallway, everybody in the, my dude barrel, everybody in the window hit me up like, man, what's up? I'm like, man, nothing. You know what I'm saying? Boom. I shoot right across the hallway. They don't even know what, what's going on, right? I shoot right across the hallway. And uh, me and them town, we, as soon as we go up in there, we looking for Big Yogi. I'm looking. Man, I see this big black dude with a fro. He got like this little mini fro. Big old black dude, man. Dude probably like six foot five. I'm a... Uh, uh, I'm 5'9", M-Town like 5'9", you know what I'm saying? So this dude is big, you know what I'm saying? He's a, he's a big dude, probably like 300-something pounds. I say 300, I ain't going to say 300-something, but he like 300 pounds, you know? And at the time, I was probably like 160, you know what I'm saying? And so we hear him like, man, you say you looking for big yoga. He was like, M-Town, man, uh, you didn't even try to come holler at me, bro. You didn't even try to come holler at me. So we go upstairs and meet Big Yoga. I'm looking at this dude like, man, this big dude, right? So uh, he started saying that M-Town didn't try to come holler at him. You know what I'm saying? M-Town was like, man, where my money at, Big Yoga? He was like, uh, man, you didn't even try to holler at me. This, here, and that, and he's They started going back and forth. So I'm like, man, say M-Town, check this out. Because me, I'm the type of dude, like, if I don't have to stab nobody, you know what I'm saying? If I don't have to go into an altercation and we can solve the, the resolve the, the issue, you know what I'm saying, with no no conflict, I try to do that. So I'm telling uh, M-Town, I'm like, M-Town, homie, man, he's saying he got the money. Why don't we just get the money, man? We bounce, you know? M-Town was like, yeah. I'm like, man, just give him the money, man. We gone, bro. He was like, yeah, I got the money. And so he turned around like he finna get ready to go get some money, but he stopped and he was like, but I'm just saying, and that's when I knew that he didn't have no money. And I was like, man, M-Town, he ain't got no money, man. Handle your business. Man, M-Town, fired on him. Bye, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Big Yoga, rock back. You know what I'm saying? As soon as M-Town fired on him, he up with the blade. I upped on him. You know what I'm saying? So M-Town stabbing him up. I'm, I'm behind him. You know what I'm saying? We got this dude. We rocking this dude, right? We all over the, the the top tier of the thing. We rocking this dude, man. Stabbed, this dude got stabbed like 50 times. You know what I'm saying? And um, I end up, we on the rack, and I'm to where we can see the hallway, and I see traffic coming, right? And uh, I see like two officers, and I thought they was coming in, but they passed by the barracks. So I was like, town, let me get you, let me get you, your, your, your tool. You know what I'm saying? Big, big yoga, he hurt. He he know he, he he's hurt, right? So M-Town, he throw me the blade. M-Town blade is bent. He had an ice pick, right? It's bent, you know? And this is a this was a steady ice pick, you know what I'm saying? So in order for it to bend, he had to bend hit hit the bone and bend it trying to pull it out, you know? So this ain't just bending like that, you know what I'm saying? This is it was a steady blade, you know? And so I get the blade. 
I'm trying to unbend it for a minute. I'm like, man, I ain't going to unbend it. I shot out. You know what I'm saying? And what I'm trying to do is protect us from catching free world charges. I shot out, hit the blaze out. But when I was passing by the birds where my brother was standing at, they, when they seen the commotion going on, they knew that we was up in there doing something. So they locked up in their birds. They can't get out. You know what I'm saying? So when he see me, we, boom, bouncing, right? I walk by, they hit me up like, man, what's up? What's up? I'm like, man, it's over. It's good, right? Boom, we shoot up in the uh, laundry room. I go up in the laundry room first. I'm in the laundry room about five minutes. I stash the blaze off. I turn around, M-Town coming in. He was like, man, I need I need to take one of them blades down there with me. So I give him a blade to take back to his birds because Big Yoga had some homeboys in M-Town's barracks. So um, M-Town take the blade, you know what I'm saying? And uh, we getting ready to leave, but Miss Brown, she stop us. She's a supervisor in the laundry room where we at. Miss Brown, she stop us. And Miss Brown was like, what y'all doing? What y'all up to? We like, nothing. What you talking about? She ain't buying it. She know the, the whole time she been in there, we, me and them town, we been on a rocky road, man. We always into something every day. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, she was like, I can look at your face and tell that y'all y'all done, done something. What y'all done done? Like, we ain't done nothing. So she look at our clothes and we're like, what y'all got that blood on your clothes for? I look down. It's blood because we got white outfits on man there's blood on my my outfit there's blood on m town outfit we took off those clothes we put on some dirty whole squad clothes because laundry was going on and they had a pile of dirty whole squad mustard whole squad clothes we threw them clothes on just to make it down the hallway to get to our birds right when i make it to my birds a ceo female that m town was messing with was on my door so i get in i take off them whole squad clothes i jump up in the shower M-Town girl come in the shower where I'm at. She's getting wet. She's in the shower with me like, what's up with what's up with your with your boy? I be like, what you talking about? I'm naked. So, you know what I'm saying? She in the shower with me in her uniform, getting her uniform wet. You know, it's crazy. And she like, man, what's up with your boy? What's up with your boy? I'm like, what you talking about? She be like, more. What's up with him? They, they taking him to the hole. They say he, he stabbed somebody in the shower. Me not knowing that this is yoga, this is the same stabbing that we just got through doing, but we did it in the barracks. She said that it was in the shower because Big Yoga came out of the barracks, made it to the shower, and said that he had been stabbed, and they took him into the infirmary. So I'm like, he stabbed somebody else? What? She was like, somebody else? So it's a confusion, man. We we was tripping. So I get out the shower. I throw my clothes on, you know what I'm saying? And I'm trying to make it down the hallway. She be like, you ain't going to make it down there. They got the whole hallway blocked. It's so many officers down there, man. They got my dude taking my dude away, you know, talking about putting him in a hole, trying to find out who, who was all the people that helped me. Didn't nobody know who I was. I used to move in silence. Even though everybody knew me, didn't nobody know me. You know what I'm saying? It was crazy, right? So, uh, you know, they put him town in the hole. A dude that used to work in the hole, uh, uh, one of the porters, an ISO porter, he come in and he tell me, he was like, man, your boy, he in the, he in the shower, man, and uh, he gone. I was like, what you talking about? He ain't saying nothing. I was like, man, tell him I, I said, what's up, this? And he like, he ain't talking. He'll go down here. He ain't talking, man. So I wrote in town a letter. I was like, say, bro, check this out, man. You got to snap up out of whatever you going through. You know what I'm saying? I was like, you ain't got to worry about no, 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 um. Uh, no free world charge coming on you because they need the blade to put a 17-1 on you. You know what I'm saying? They never going to find that blade. Don't worry about that. What they going to do at the most, you'll probably sit in the hole for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? About three months. They going to send you to another institution. You know what I'm saying? M-Town read that note because he knew I, I that, that was my MO. You know what I'm saying? So I already know how, how this type of stuff goes. So when I said what I said, he knew I knew what I was talking about. So... He wrote me back. He was like, man, I love you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you my dude. You know, he was like, this is my mama number. Call my mama for me. You know what I'm saying? Let my mama know what's going on. I called his mama. She was going through it. She was like, oh, what? I need to call the news. And I'm like, no, nah, just chill out. You know, she was like, was he at fault? I was like, no, nah, he wasn't at fault. You know what I'm saying? Got to understand that we in prison. You know, we, we got a certain status that we got to live by in prison, you know? 
And I was like, I, I wouldn't, even if the situation had a, had a came, me, I didn't have family at the time. I didn't have no family support. I didn't have nothing to get back out there too. He did. He had more to get back out there too than I did, right? So I would have took the charge for him, you know what I'm saying, if it came down to that. But I knew it wasn't going to come down to it. So uh, I was telling his mama, I was basically like, man, don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they need a knife. They need the, the knife that uh, the dude got stabbed with before they could charge him with a 17-1 because that's the weapon that was used in the, in the crime. I was like, they'll never find that, that weapon. And so she, when I got off the phone with her, she was she always tell me to call her back, call her back. I was like, no, I was like, miss, uh, I understand you want me to call you back, but if your son don't tell me to call you back, I, I ain't finna call you back. You know what I'm saying? I, I appreciate the jest or whatever. She was like, no, you call me back, call me back. I told her, yeah, but I wasn't going to call her back, you know what I'm saying, unless him town needed me to call. That's his mama, man. That's my bro. You know what I'm talking about? So I told him town what she said, and I told him that she said call him. Like, if she said call back, call back, man. You good. You know what I'm saying? I was like, nah, I ain't going to do it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to do it. Until M town tell me to call back, that's the only time I called his mama and told his mama anything. You know? She even made it a point to uh try to get her daughter to come and uh, get on my visitation list to come visit me. You know, because if I'm that tight with her son and I'm looking out for her son like that, she felt like, you know, this is family. I'm glad that he got family that's looking out for him like 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 you do, you know. And so I appreciated that. So I had to calm her down. And she she was like, yeah, I talked to his friend that work up in there. And I knew who she was talking about. She was talking about the same woman that came and got in the shower with me when I was, you know, saying trying to clean up and get out them whole squad clothes. And so uh, she was like, yeah, I talked to his friend. And uh, I was telling telling his friend what you told me about the knife, and uh, she was like, "If uh, if he said that they ain't gonna find a knife, believe it, they ain't gonna find a knife." And she was like, "You and him is like brothers, y'all stayed, you know, saying Nate tight together and all this." I was like, "Yeah, that's my bro, you know." So she was like, "Man, I'm happy he got somebody, you know, saying that's there, they got his back, that's looking out for his well being." I was like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I was like, everything he go through, I go through too. You know what I'm saying? That's my bro, you know? She, it was, it, It's what it was, you know? And so uh, they transferred my dude, man. They transferred him to uh, Pine Bluff. We used to write. We used to bounce letters back. We used to write each other. He was telling me about he was cutting her where he went, you know what I'm saying? And that he this was his first time using clippers and he messed up somebody's head because he's so used to using razors. We tripping, we laughing and everything, you know? And uh, but yeah, it was it was it was alright, you know. And uh, that right there was was one of the incidents when I was at at at, at Bricky Unit, you know. And I got some more tales, man, about Bricky Unit and and Varna and Grimes and and even even juvenile detention centers. But this here is gonna be my first post for my prison stories that I want to tell y'all that I want to put y'all up on. You know, and uh, I like to have the feedback. Let me know what y'all think about the stories and stuff. And if y'all want to hear more, you know, I got a whole lot of tales, man, from from Arkansas to California to Washington to, you know what I'm saying? I got stories, you know what I'm saying, from, from incarceration from different places, you know what I'm saying? So tune in, man. Y'all stay stay connected, man. And all my subscribers, man, I love y'all for staying up, man. This here is Zopal, man. I'm going to even get on get on y'all some tales about, man, the the, the originalities in the, in, in the movements of uh, Zopal, man, how we trying to uh, uh, take it from from the criminal aspect of what it was, man, back in the in the uh, early nineties, man, to what it is in the in the two thousands, man. We trying to get business minded, man, as those, man. We trying to link together, man, as family. You know what I'm talking about? It, it never was, you know, what I'm saying created to be a criminal aspect. It was created, man, for us to have family and un unity amongst each other. You know what I'm saying? For us to have principle and for us to have something to look forward to. You know what I'm saying? Because of the uh, mistreatments and, and you know, you know how it was, you know what I'm saying? But today is not that, you know what I'm saying? I'm just letting y'all know I'm going to get on a whole lot of different grounds, you know, from, from Miami to, to Memphis to, to Washington, you know, uh, from Seattle to Auburn, you know what I'm saying? To California, you know, I'm all over, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm worldwide. I'm united. I'm, 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 I'm uh, internationally known, locally accepted. Like my dude, uh, Pimpin' Passport used to always say to me down there, man. Shout out to Pimpin' Passport. I don't know where he at, you know what I'm saying? But if you looking at this, bro, you know, I'm right here. Hit me up, you know. 
Everybody, man, that's out there, man, especially my Zos, man, hit me up, man. We represent this here to the fullest, man. Zopound, Pula V, you know what I'm saying? Y'all stay up, man.